Hello and welcome everyone, it's Capcan. We are continuing our previews of the talent trees from the Dragonflight and now we're gonna look at the Shadow, Shadow Priest tree. Uh, main Priest tree we've already previewed, it's pretty cool. There is some uh, questionable things there, but mostly it's pretty cool. And now we're going to the Shadow Point. So Devouring Play Plague is our talent that we can skip which is quite logical now silence uh, silence is the target preventing them from casting spells for four seconds against non-players also interrupts spell casting and prevents any spell in that school from being cast for four seconds so that's our silence that we've already had 45 seconds pretty long cooldown of course because uh, we are ranged um, damage dealer therefore we don't really now, we can't have a, a lesser cooldown on that spell because it's gonna be cheating against melee. A dispersion. Disperse into pure shadow energy, reducing all damage taken by 75% for 6 seconds and healing you for 25% uh, of your maximum health over its duration, but you're unable to attack and cast spells. Uh, increases our movement speed by 50% and makes you immune to all movement impairing effects castable while stunned feared or silenced still our uh, the ability that we had before no uh, nothing new here shadowy apparitions when you use mind blast devour and plate or void bolt you also create a shadowy version of yourself that floats towards all targets inflicted by your vampiric touch dealing some uh, uh, pr somewhat less uh, uh, lesser sp um, shadow damage critical strikes will uh, cause two apparitions to be created that's the basic stuff that we already have in shadow priest currently now again psychic horror uh, terrifies the target and place stunning them for four, four seconds or uh, last word reduces the cooldown of silence by 15 seconds so that's uh, the, ch the Mm, choice that we've currently already has as well in our current talent tree uh, you can either oh wait a second reduces the cooldown of silence and not psychic scream uh, then I don't really know if that's the current uh, choice that we have already maybe it is uh, both things uh, seems uh, familiar especially stun stun is definitely something that we uh, can get uh, ourselves so if you want to interrupt uh, more often you will take last word if you need stuns which are too uh, quite useful maybe not as much as uh, interrupts every uh, 30 seconds instead of every 45 seconds especially not in mythic plus you will well you i, I guess uh, choice here really depends on situation both talents are good misery vampiric touch also applies shadow word pain to the target uh, shadow word pain lasts an additional five seconds that is one of the quintessential stuff for our mythic plus rotation uh, you don't really have enough time for uh, to um, use both your vampiric touch and shadow word pain uh, on every single ta target that you uh, that you're hitting if there are like five or six enemies uh, near you and then this one just gives you so much time so much space in order to deal damage it ramps up your damage in aoe scenarios uh, immensely or dark void unleashes an, unleashes an explosion of dark uh, energy around your target dealing shadow damage and applying uh, shadow word paint to your target and seven nearby enemies generates 20 insanity and has 30 seconds cooldown okay so with this dark void which costs two seconds and unleashes shadow word paint to all targets near your main one You'll still have to apply Vampiric Touch on every single enemy. Mm, and if you're uh, Shadow Word, if you're attacking the mobs from the back um, uh, for longer than the Shadow Word Pain itself can be, uh, for longer, longer than the Shadow Word Pain's duration itself then this talent will not be as good because uh, when your shadow world pains uh, just uh, vanishes out of your targets you're gonna have to reapply it again 
it may be um, some kind of a replacement of course for the misery definitely uh, especially for mythic plus cases 30 seconds cooldowns it's just for one uh, for each one new pack you're gonna use it it will give you more damage um, right from the start and wait a second so now when you use mind bless devour and played in void bolt you also create a shadowy version to all targets inflicted by your vampiric touch which means that you still even with this talent you can't just um, use the dark void then go with mind blast or uh, devouring plague and um, your operations will spawn now you still will use this one then you will use vampiric touch vampiric touch vampiric touch uh, it generates some insanity too but still quite interesting again more choices cool don't really know uh, which one are you gonna take, <clears throat> to be honest. Uh, intangibility. Uh, requires Priest Shadow. Dispersion heals you for an additional 25% of your maximum health, which is Dispersion's here. Um, over its duration and its cooldown is reduced by 30 seconds. So instead of 2 minutes, it's 1 minute and 30 seconds. Second one, Mental Fortitude. Healing from Vampiric Touch in Devour and Plague when you are at maximum health will shield you for the same amount. Shield cannot exceed, uh, so one tenth total health. Uh, like, yeah, ten, is that 10%? Wait a second. Total health. Like, for example, if it's 1000 health, uh, 10,000 health. And divided by 100, it's. 10,000 health minus two zeros it's 100 health so from your so that's that's 10 percent so yeah shield can't exceed 10 percent uh, uh, of your maximum health of your yeah ma maximum health <clears throat> okay so i guess um, i guess mental fortitude is more consistent and intangibility is better if you are receiving some very hard hitting stuff it's probably way better uh, for you in pvp as well uh, in case of pve stuff uh, depends on the counter now shadow operations so we will uh, take it of course as well auspicious uh, spirits your shadowy operations now deal 15 percent increased damage and generate to insanity of course that is crucial for our a weekly your Shadow Ward Pain damage has a 5% chance to create Shadow Operation that flows towards all targets afflicted by your Vampiric Touch. Critical Strike chance... Critical Strikes increase the chance to 10%. Critical Strikes increase the chance to 10%. Oh, shit. Your Shadow Operation now deal 15% increased damage. Man, these both talents are very good. You definitely want one of them if you're in AoE situation and probably even if you're in this single target situation as well. That's very, very good. Uh, Mind Seer. Corrosive shadow energy radiates from the target, dealing uh, some kind of uh, shadow damage over 4 seconds to all enemies within 10 yards of the target. Channeled. So that's our filler for AoE situations when you have all your uh, when, when you have all your dots uh, spread around targets, when you have your cooldowns on cooldown already, and you're just filling the void of on in your rotation. Okay, let's uh, get with all this stuff. Probably, uh, maybe I don't even need it, but still. Uh, coalescing shadows. Let's go section by section. Uh, so now, uh, last word and, oh, yeah, silence and some other stuff part. Uh, Coalescing Shadows. Mind Seer and Shadow Ward Pain damage has a 4% chance to grant you Coalescing Shadows and Mind Flay has a 15% chance to grant you Coalescing Shadows, stacking up to 3 times. Mind Blast and Mind Spike consume all Coalescing Shadows to deal 20% increased damage per stack and consuming at least 1 uh, increases the damage of your periodic effects by 10% for 15 seconds oh that's good that's very very good for damage uh, in almost all situations hallucinations uh, requires priests uh, show your successful dispel magic mass dispel purify disease vampiric embrace and power word shield cast generation generate six insanity during combat so 
uh, for you being uh, utility focused for you bringing uh, utility to your group you gain additional uh, damage resource which is great and shadow ward death deals 75 percent less damage to the caster it's for you to uh, to cast it uh, in like single target situation mostly and not receive as much damage which is good as well but i guess uh, that's more of a boss stuff and more of a Mm, yeah, more of a more of a uh, group stuff is uh, more of a mythic plus. Definitely is uh, hallucinations. Now, puppet master, your shadow, f your shadow fiend and mind bearer, bender, bender uh, grant you coalescing shadows each time they deal damage. Damage from your shadow operations has a eight percent chance to grant you coalescing shadows. Ooh. That's very good as well, because 10% increase for all your periodic effects, uh, increasing damage for your Mind Blast, Mind Spike. Uh, Damnation instantly afflicts the target with Shadow Ward Pain, Vampiric Touch and Devouring Plague. If I'm not mistaken, we've had something similar to that already. It's good um, in some situations, it's burst damage, definitely for PvP it's cool, of course. Uh, definitely not so hot for Mythic Plus and may be useful at some bosses mm, yeah but okay uh, harness shadows increases the chance again again for you to spend only one talent point on this stuff it may be very very good because uh, i am still thinking a bit of uh, uh, i'm still thinking a little bit in 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 past standards where you have to choose one talent don't choose another and you're like man i want to i want to take this anyway but here you have more ta more points uh, and you can get more stuff just for you to um to get more niche things that you can use in different kinds of situations where this damnation can be very good maybe uh, so yeah Harness Shadows increases the chance for you to gain a coalescing shadow when dealing damage with Mind Seer and Shadow Ward Pain by 2% and Mind Flay by 10%. You have a 100% chance to gain a coalescing shadow when critically hit by any attack. This effect can only occur every 6 seconds. So this one, uh, this part is uh, hardly uh, focused around coalescing shadows and it's very good uh, buff uh, which gives you a lot of damage. Mm, it it probably worth taking. Uh, this is the cut. So damnation here. This is the cooldown of damnation by fifteen seconds. So now it's it has thirty seconds cooldown. <sighs> Which really still depends on how your rotation plays. If you don't really have any spare point at time of time to weave in vampiric touch shadow word pain uh, and devouring plague and where you when you're casting these abilities you're actively losing dps on single target then probably damnation especially with that for talent point would be good but if you still have enough time when your procs not proking or when you uh, when you have your um, cooldowns on cooldown, you can still weave in Vampiric Touch, Shadow Ward Pain, Devouring Plague and all stuff. I don't really think that that's very necessary uh, to exist, yet still, there, of course, there can be situations where it uh, will be useful. Psychic Link, Mind Blast and Mind Spike deal 15% of its damage to all the other target inflicted by your Vampiric Touch within 40 yards? And it goes up to 30. Man, that's gonna be so good. Yeah, this talent uh, definitely makes your AoE uh, feel different. Because now you have uh, more things that just snapshot one on top of each other. And it's like you've casted all the dots. Now you have apparitions that are going to every single target. And now your mind blast uh not just attacks only one target it uh, blows everybody in the radius yeah that's very cool for aoe clear talent 
And Madden in touch when Pyrrhic touch has a 50% chance to generate one insanity each time it deals damage. That's probably a must have because you will have your vampiric touch up almost all the time. Uh, now let's go with more centric part of the tree. Uh, Mind Spike. Bless uh, the target for 88% of spell power, Shadow Frost, Shadow Frost damage, but extinguishes your shadow damage over time effects. Increases the critical strike chance of your next Mind Bless by 30%, stacking up to 3 times. Man. And it doesn't have cooldown. That's one of the more hard to understand skills, and if you don't really know how the how the how, how everything plays in a cohesive manner, then probably I wouldn't really comment on this stuff. It's interesting that you have this uh, different type of skill which you can use and uh, extinguish your uh, all dot uh, effects how it's gonna play how it will give you or uh, rob you out of dps i don't know which means that yeah you need to test this out you need to get the feel of it you need to take uh, test the results of dps and stuff mind spike reduces cast time of your next mind blast by 50 percent stacking up to two times last six seconds it's either for you to be less of a dot centric class and uh, just dealing insta damage all the time and just uh, getting shadow spike shadow spike mind spike mind spike then then mind blast mind blast i don't know but it's pretty interesting that they've given us this thing uh, surge of darkness uh, your vampiric touch and devouring plague damage have a chance to cause your next mind spike to not consume your damage over time effects be instant and deal 50% additional damage, stacks up to 3 times. Uh, oh yeah, so, uh, or you can just make, or you probably will make this um, Mind Spike uh, into a proc, proc thing that will just uh, deal additional insta damage, increase the damage of your Mind Blast. Uh, yeah, that's, that's way more of a... <laughs> a uh, logical mm, thing to have choose one uh, void torrent uh, channel three seconds cast 30 seconds cooldown channel a torrent of void energy into the target dealing uh 300 points 306 uh, percent of spell power shadow damage over three seconds generate 60 insanity over the duration so you so you channel it uh okay so that's uh, some additional uh, cooldown for your single target um, rotation and shadow crash hurls a bolt of uh, slow moving shadow energy at the destination dealing shadow damage to all targets within NCRs and applying vampiric touch to four of them so this one uh, shadow crash you can uh, get it uh, with uh, com in combination with your um, uh, no with your dark void yeah, and Dark Void uh, inflicts Shadow Word Pain on everyone, has 30 seconds cooldown. Uh, then your Shadow Crash inflicts uh, Vampiric Touch to everyone, has 30 seconds cooldown. Then you start pumping off, and if packs uh, die, if pack dies pretty fast, and your Vampiric Touch and uh, Shadow Word Pain didn't um, went off. Uh, then you will don't lose any DPS. You will you will gain uh, a lot of DP damage, which is yeah that yeah that's pretty cool talent. That's pretty cool ch um, choice point between single target and uh, multiple target skills. And whispers of the damned. Your mind blast and mind spike uh, critical strikes generate an additional three insanity. Yeah, that's just more resource generation, more damage. Stuff like that. So this part was centric around increasing your dots damage, uh, around coalescing shadows. And this part of, th of, th of the talent tree was uh, focused on uh, more of a bursty, instant, uh, not dot oriented uh, skills additional stuff in your rotation additional uh, aoe damage from uh, those uh, not non-dot uh, spells 
Um, and what about uh, your fear part? In the, or or that's, that's maybe not, that's just icon of fear. Vampiric instinct. Uh, vampiric touch, periodic damage has a chance to reset the remaining cooldown on mind blast and cause your next mind blast to be instant. I think we have something similar already right now. Mental decay. The duration of your shadow ward pain and vampiric touch is increased by one second when enemies suffer mind flay or mind seer damage. I guess uh, that's mostly so. If you're ch if you're casting mind flay on or mind seer damage on one target, this particular target will have prolonged uh, duration of vampiric touch and shadow word pain. Dark Evangelism. Your Mind Flame, Mind Seer and Void Torrent uh, damage increases the damage of your periodic shadow effects by one percent, stacking up to five times. Okay. Uh, Dark Ascension. Oh, wait a second. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, bless me. Uh, consumes Dark Evangelism to increase uh, the damage of your non periodic. So that's Dark Evangelism? Yep. Consumes Dark Evangelism to increase the damage of your non periodic, non -periodic shadow spells by 4% per stack consumed. So either 10% either uh, increase for your shadow effects. Oh, and you can't really you can't really get the dark ascension ascension if you only put one talent point in the dark evangelism. Fuck. It consumes dark evangelism to increase the damage uh, of your non periodic shadow spells. Yeah, yeah. So you're either investing more of a that's that's just a burst burst cooldown with two minutes cooldown. Realistically, you wouldn't use it in uh, any sort of situation in M plus. Uh, maybe somewhere in raids, but I doubt it. That's probably more of a PvP uh, just burst uh, cooldown. It generates 30 insanity. Yeah. Uh, unfurling darkness. After casting Vampiric Touch on a target, your next Vampiric Touch within 8 seconds is instant ca cast and deals 105% uh, spell power shadow damage immediately. This effect cannot occur more than once every 15 seconds. So that's some kind of a cleave, I don't know, so if you will manually cast your vampiric touch on one target, then you can um, cast a second, or you can just uh, cast it as additional DPS cooldown with 105% of spell power um, going off immediately. But for one talent point, that's not really wise. You probably will cast your second one on the on on other pr probably boss or PvP target. Uh, you will get get it off instantly. You will cast your uh, operations instantly and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's. That's that's more of a situational stuff, I guess. Piercing shadows. Your shadow spells, spell casts increase your. Your shadow spell casts increase your shadow damage by 0.5% for 25 seconds, stacks up to 5 times. So that's for you to ramp up your damage, if that's an extensive combat, if you will have time to ramp up, that's pretty good. So Void Eruption is optional talent, holy shit. And, and somebody wouldn't even take this one. Maybe, of course, there will there will be people that wouldn't take it. Release an explosive blast of pure void energy, activating void form and causing um, shadow damage to all enemies within 10 yards of your target. During void form, this ability is replaced by void bolt. Yeah, so void eruption is core uh, talent, is core um, ability right now in the game. But here it doesn't cost. I uh, no, it doesn't cost. Uh, it doesn't cost. No, it it, co it costs nothing. Uh, now too, or does it? Man, I, j I just can't, I just can't uh, recall. But yeah, uh, Void Eruption, pretty massive spell for the uh, Shadow Priests uh, currently. Don't know how it will change with all the other stuff that we are getting in the new expansion. Derangement. Oh no, let's go with uh, Void Eruption part uh, first. Uh, Ancient Madness. Void form increases your critical strike chance by 15% for 15 seconds, reducing one by 1% 1 every second. Shit. Yep. Uh, th by 30 seconds. Uh, and then Hunger in Void. 
or surrender to madness. Void Bolt causes the target to become vulnerable to the Void, increasing their damage taken uh, by 10%. Wait a second. And let's continue from where we stopped. Uh, taken for, from you by 10% for 12 seconds, this effect may only be active on the target at a time. Once more, Void Bolt causes the target to become vulnerable to the Void, increases their damage taken from you by 10 seconds. This effect may only be active on, the tar uh, on one target at a time. Casting Void Bolt on an enemy that is already vulnerable extends the duration of your Void form by 2 seconds or 4 seconds if Void Bolt critical strikes. So that's your single target uh, multi damage multiplier for bosses, definitely. Surrender to Madness. Instant 2 minutes cooldown. Re uh, deals uh, some uh, shadow damage to the target and activates Void Form. For the next 30 seconds your insanity generating abilities generate 100% more insanity and you can cast while moving. If the target does not die within uh, 30 seconds... Uh, one moment went... Uh, yeah. If the target does not die within 30 seconds of using Surrender to Madness, you die. So that's definitely the thing for you to use in M+, because you can uh, kill targets way faster than in raids, if, you're, if we're talking about uh, raid bosses. Yeah, so first one is your single target raid ability, second one is more closer to the uh, a mythic plus ability now we're gonna take the points from this stuff and go for the derangement increases the initial damage of devouring plague by 75% mine seer deals damage 20% faster uh, so 75% increase uh, uh, damage for your devouring plague is uh, plus an additional for damage of course so that's 50% plus 75% out of that it's closer to it, it instead of 50% it's gonna damage like uh, 85-90% yeah more more to the 90 and 90 with some additional percents probably mastermind increases the critical strike chance of mind spike and mind blast by 3% and increases their uh, critical strike damage bonus by 15% so critical strike multiplier and crit chance there are many talents for crit strike uh, chance damage and all that stuff uh, across the whole tree so crits are uh, I, I assume are gonna be pretty important for the shadow well you have shadow ward pain devouring plague and vampiric touch active on the same target your mind blast deals 20% more damage that's more of a, a single target oriented shit uh, mind devour mind blast has a 8% uh, chance to make your next devouring plague cast no insanity oh cool 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 yeah that's just uh, overall a uh, good talent in both aoe and single target uh, uh, moments lunacy reduces the insanity cost of devouring plague by 10 oh and it costs 50 gonna cost 40 reduce the insanity drained when mind seer deals damage by 5 idol idol of yog saron uh, after conjuring 50 shadowy apparitions, you summon a thing from beyond that serves you for 20 seconds. The thing from beyond blasts enemies for uh, shadow, some shadow, shadow damage. Second one will definitely be viable mostly in the AoE situations where you're conjuring hundreds of... Uh, okay, not hundreds, but you're conjuring many and many more uh, shadowy apparitions than you will be able to do on solo stuff. This is the insanity cost of devouring plague is just universally good all right okay okay yeah now uh let's go here uh, what do we have here? Uh, death Speaker. Your Shadow Ward Pain damage has a chance to reset the cooldown of Shadow Ward Death and enable 150% additional damage regardless of the target's health. Uh, or casting Devouring Plague transforms your Mind Flay spell into Mind Flay Insanity. For 5 seconds Mind Flay Insanity deals 80% more damage than Mind Flay. Uh, that's things that will definitely change your playstyle, uh, either additional procs or uh, very hard uh, buff for one of your 
uh, skills pretty cool pain of death increases the damage dealt by shadow ward death again so more emphasis on shadow ward death damage shadow ward death deals 20 percent of its damage to all targets affected by your shadow ward pain within 40 radius and now shadow ward death becomes aoe skill man that's so cool this part of tree with this and these talents it's very nice and you you can have again you can tailor your gameplay to more towards what you want uh i very much like it monomania while channeling mind slayer mind seer the tick rate of your vampiric touch and shadow ward pain on your current target is increased by 25 percent and their crit chance is increased by 20 by three percent and here is gonna be five percent and fifty percent so channeling mind oh no that that was mind seer or mind seer or mind flay the tick rate of your vampiric touch or shadow and shadow ward pain on the current target is increased man that's so good for aoe as well i don't really know how strong it will be for single target when you can have more for, for single target you um more often do you have uh, different uh bursty and instant cooldowns that you can use and get more dps than mind flay uh but still very cool stuff very cool stuff idol of Cthun. mind flay and mind seer approximately prox uh two procs per minute so every 30 seconds approximately mind flay and mind seer have a chance to spawn a void tendril or void lasher that channels at your target for 15 seconds generating three insanity every one seconds oh yeah uh, it reminds me of some uh, bfa uh, corruption uh, powers idol of nzoth Damage dealt by uh, Shadow Ward Pain, Vampiric Touch and Devouring Plague has 20% chance to apply Echoing Void. Each time Echoing Void is applied it has a chance to collapse dealing 50% shadow of 50 of attack power, shadow damage to all nearby enemies until no stacks remain. I guess that's not your attack power. Uh, damage dealt by Shadow... So yeah, you can... Uh, basically you can get some additional proking uh bursts uh from just your uh dots ticking or mind flay or and mind seer have a chance to spawn a wand void tendril that gives you insanity man again pretty interesting different styles of different styles of skills uh hard to calculate which one will be better because yeah you need to look at the numbers you need to probably make some simulations and all that stuff and our last part mindbender summons a, summons a mindbender to attack the target for 15 seconds generates five insanity each time the mindbender attacks and second one is idol of Yusharj. Uh, summoning Shadow Fiend causes you to gain a benefit based on your target's current state or increases its duration by 5 seconds if no state matches. Uh, healthy state. Uh, you and your Shadow Fiend deal 5% additional damage to Enraged. Devours the Enraged effect, increases in your haste by 5% so you can uh, get the uh, Enraged effect out of your enemies. Stunned generates 5 insanity every 5 seconds. Uh, every one second oh and feared you and your shadow fiend deal 15 percent increased damage and do not break fear effect do not break fear effects holy shit that this looks like a very good pvp talent idol of your charge definitely and it may be good for single targets as well but it's it looks like uh pvp target for me pvp talent for me Okay, idol of your charge. Your mind flay and mind spike critical strikes reduce the cooldown of shadow fiend by three seconds or mind bender by one second. So you see very heavy emphasis again on critical strikes. And it's heavily emphasized across uh, the whole talent tree, which means that I didn't really saw any mastery, haste, or other stuff uh, uh, somewhat uh, be touched upon the talent tree and critical strikes are definitely a prominent one around here shadow flame prism mind blast and shadow ward death cause your shadow fiend and or mind vendor to teleport behind your target slashing up to five nearby enemies for uh some damage uh, shadow flame damage each time a rift is triggered the duration of shadow fiend or mind vendor is increased by one second 
So while your cooldown damage cooldown is up in in the way of Shadow Fiend or Mind Bender, your damage in abilities can proc it and uh, do additional AOE damage, which is cool. And yeah, I love all these things here. Uh, Shadow Tree looks very interesting. Plenty of choices. Uh, different kinds of situations, different kinds of talents are good or bad uh, in some of them. I just really want to play every single spec that I've currently saw. So I've saw all the warrior specs and I've saw the shadow tree and I want to play uh, each and every class. I, I hope that I'm gonna get the feel, this feel out of every single uh, class and subclass uh, talent tree in Dragonflight. Thank you for tuning in my uh, previews. Hope you enjoyed it and goodbye.